Lord bless it. Isaiah chapter 9. <laughs> Once again, I want to say we are so glad to have our guest this morning. Uh, for you to be with us and share in this time. Uh, I want to say we, like I said, appreciate the young people, those that direct our young people. Wasn't that done just so? Uh, proper and I just love that. Um, you know, uh, I love the program where we have uh, the little children and we have the major scene and we have sometimes the little ones, the chiefs kind of get us go astray and kind of, you know, entertain us pretty good and, and all of that. And even sometimes in the uh, grown up programs, uh, we have some sheep and goats uh, going a little astray. Uh, and it brings a little humor uh, to the program. Uh, but you know what? Uh, it is so good to uh, come and very refreshing to come and see uh, the young people carry out a program uh, with such preciseness. And it's a blessing. Uh, and, and that's one thing that uh, we as God's people, uh, we have to be very careful about to not get so audacious, uh, you know, so uh, relaxed in our, our worship and and our serving God that we think God don't care about order anymore or, or God doesn't think about uh, correctness. He, uh, he does and He's a very correct God. Uh, he's a very precise God. He's a very holy God. Uh, and He has an expectation of us, us as God's people. Uh, we have to remember there is a separation between us uh, and the world that don't know God uh, because uh, when He comes into us and lives and dwells within us, it brings a certain order to our lives. Uh, it brings a certain manner uh, to our lives uh, that many times we did not have uh, before uh, the Lord came in. Uh, so uh, even those that weren't raised uh, in a uh, godly home and, and, and those rules were set, uh, it, it creates in them a hunger uh, to find that uh, because that's what they're looking for in God, uh, that security that stability, that steadfastness, that established rules. Uh, and God does have established rules. Uh, so let's remember that uh, as we go. Listen to me, it, it, it's not a message uh, that I uh, just picked out of the air and go, oh, well, that'd be good if I could do that. Uh, and it's got a toll over this uh, message this morning. Uh, of course, there's many, many, many uh, messages a man uh, can give on Christmas morning. Uh, that's simply traditional. Uh, that we just follow tradition and, and go with it like that and, 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 and all other directions. But uh, there are all certain things, uh, listen, that we come to church for. There are certain things we come to church for. Uh, you, you, you should get things at church uh, that maybe you wouldn't get at a Christmas program downtown in the city park. Uh, but not there's anything wrong with that. Glory to God. Uh, uh, or in some other venue, you might not get uh, what you expect to get in church, but you expect the church to get the truth. Amen. That's the place of truth, of steadfastness. Uh, chapter 9, uh, the book of Isaiah, chapter 9 and verse 6. Chapter 9 and verse 6. <laughs> Father, I need your help this morning. Only you can preach. And God, I'll just follow you. God, you be glorified in all that we do. You be honored. You be lifted up above every name. And attention brought to the newborn king this morning. The Savior of the world. But God with us, Emmanuel. Uh, Lord, you have your way. Uh, Lord, you lead and guide. Touch the hearts, direct the people's lives. Uh, from what they hear this morning, God, and let them apply it to their lives, Father, and throughout this holiday season, and we'll praise you. Lord, there might be one that don't know Christ this morning here. Uh, Lord, chances are, a crowd this big, Lord, uh, odds are that there's many in this room that don't know Christ, uh, that have not called on Him as Lord. Uh, so, Lord, I ask you to help them this morning. And your people, God, Lord, let us become that steadfast, established people. Lord, you're coming back for a changed bride, uh, one that is separated unto you. 
of one that uh, <coughs> pays attention to holiness and righteousness and, and righteous living. Uh, so, Lord, we, we want to be that bride that you're coming back for. Uh, Lord, we want to set that example. You help us today in Christ's name. Amen. Uh, the Bible says, For through us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And the increase of his government, the peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it, to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform it. You be seated. Well, that sounds very direct and very sure. Uh, about what uh, Christmas really is. Uh, that should take away all doubt, all wonder uh, about what Christmas, uh, what is it really about? Uh, this is what it's really about as far as God's people are concerned. Now listen to me. I don't want to dash the uh, fantasy uh, Christmas uh, that we've uh, uh, allowed to be established in the world and in our homes today. I'm not here to do that. Uh, I'm not here to tell on Santa Claus. Uh, I'm not here to do any of that. Uh, I am here to preach of the Word. Uh, so I want you to pay close attention. I'm not going to spend very much time uh, on the message this morning because I believe it is so direct uh, and so straight to the heart that it doesn't need a lot of explanation. Uh, simply listen to what I say, listen to what God has given me, and I believe uh, that you'll leave here uh, fully filled with God's intent for your life. Uh, so let's try and do that uh, this morning. I uh, want to share a couple of more verses for you. You don't have to turn there. Uh, but the book of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 23, the Bible says, Behold, the virgin uh, shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, uh, which interpreted God with us. Uh, and, and then in Luke uh, 1 and 31, uh, there, there's also uh, a verse that says, Luke 1 uh, and 31, uh, the Bible says, And behold, thou shalt talk unto Mary, the angel speaking to Mary, and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Thou shalt call his name Jesus. Uh, like I said, I don't want to uh, take anything away from uh, what the world and, and what commercialism and, uh, and marketing and, and all of that has uh, turned Christmas into uh, as far as the world uh, is concerned. It certainly hasn't uh, turned us into that as God's people. Uh, if we guard very carefully against it, listen, I don't have anything to I don't have anything to uh, uh, condemn about uh, the idea of setting balls and bringing gifts and, and reindeer and snow and snowmen and, and all of that. I don't want to dash anyone's uh, thought of that at all. Uh, that's not what I'm here for. I believe there's certain uh, benefits that have been gained by the story of Santa Claus and teaching morals and, and being good. A lot of times it's a, a good leverage, too, to make the young and straighten out a little bit. God knows anytime we can get a little help with that, that's okay. Uh, so, uh, you know, I think it, I think probably some use of leverage uh, in that uh, respect uh, when it comes to that. I don't think there's been a whole lot of damage uh, done uh, to the cause of Christ because of that if we, uh, as God's people, stay focused on the main thing. But uh, it does exist. Uh, it does exist. Uh, so uh, there's that story uh, that the world has uh, of what Christmas is all about. Uh, and then there's a story uh, that the church has and God's people have uh, that really know uh, what Christmas is all about. Uh, so, so I want to focus in uh, on that this morning because uh, I believe there, uh, uh, to a degree, has been a lie perpetrated uh, on the people of the world today as to what Christmas is really about. Uh, we as God's people and uh, we as the church at large uh, want to remember that we all, it's the greatest opportunity we'll ever have uh, throughout the year uh, to present the gospel uh, without uh, having some uh, way of, uh, of introduction. 
Uh, it is simply, uh, sure, it's Christmas. You know what Christmas is about. Uh, you know what it's all about, right? Uh, you know about the son was born uh, in a manger and, and all that kind of thing. So it's a great opportunity uh, for soul winning uh, as, as you'll get in a year. You just won't get a better opportunity to uh, introduce the gospel to somebody. Uh, so uh, we as God's people have, have to continue uh, to remember that. But there's been a lot perpetrated uh, in the world today, and, and I believe it's to direct the attention away from the Master, away from the truth true Christmas and uh, what Christmas is really about. Uh, just to kind of shade over uh, and not very uh, pay very close attention to, oh yeah, 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 we believe in Jesus, we believe in all that, but we, you know, we have the, the thing, we have the Christmas thing. We, and listen, I think, I think we as God's people uh, should allow uh, the, the story of Christ to be overlaid uh, with that. I don't think it should be under that. Uh, I think it should be above that. Uh, and as long as you keep him above that, uh, then you keep him in his proper place. Uh, and, and it's not uh, out, of, out of the way. Uh, I'm not talking about, that. I'm not, I'm not talking, talking about being a Scrooge or, uh, or, or trying to hurt someone's feelings or, or anything like that. Uh, you can do it in a proper way uh, that glorifies God. And I think that's what we all should be mindful of uh, during Christmas time. But I believe there's a lot been perpetrated in the world today uh, to misdirect our attention away from uh, the, the virgin birth uh, the manger scene, uh, the life uh, lived sinless, uh, given for us uh, to forgive sins. I believe they have done a lot perpetrated uh, to keep the world from looking at that uh, and distract away from the glory of God. Uh, so, 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 and I believe there are many other lives uh, that, that, that are very damning uh, and very uh, dangerous uh, to the world today. Uh, and if we begin to accept uh, these others, uh, or this one, uh, and just say, well, you know, I mean, you can do it, but you don't have to believe, or you don't believe, or do believe, and, and it just kind of wash, you know, just kind of, you know, water everything down a little bit, uh, not to hurt anybody's feelings. Listen to me. I, I believe we saw just a perfect example this morning uh, of that uh, when these children were up here uh, in order, uh, singing the glories of God uh, in the proper place, in the proper way, and all that. I believe we brought order to that. I believe we, we, we put on a perfect example uh, that there is a difference. Uh, in our Christmas and the world's Christmas. Uh, right? There is a difference and we should make that start a difference of that. But, but, but I believe there's that lies that are, that are much more dangerous than that. Uh, and the reason I bring this up is that if we let lies become so readily accepted uh, and easily spoken of uh, and watered down uh, the gospel to the point that it defends no one, uh, keeps everybody happy and smiling and and clicking their heels, and I'll, I think we, I'm afraid we're going to water it down so much uh, that it's not the gospel anymore. Right. Uh, so we have to be very careful. Uh, but I believe there's about five or six lies that are perpetrated in the world today that I think are very dangerous uh, and send people to hell. Uh, and I think that uh, if there's anywhere else in the world uh, that, that, that you would, would get this, uh, you should get this here. Uh, you should get this truth here. Uh, before we go home this morning, uh, we should leave with the, with the full truth in our hearts about Christmas. Uh, the number one lie uh, that I believe is perpetrated today in the world, uh, today and I believe very, 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 very dangerous, is that life's just random. <laughs> life is just random. Uh, it just happens. Uh, life comes, there, there's really no creator. Uh, there's no God. I mean, you know, I love this, this, this expression that you see on television nowadays. You're like, whatever you want God to be. Uh, you know, God's not whatever you want Him to be. He's God. Amen. You don't get to make up your own God. He's God Almighty. Amen. He's the creator of the world. He's the creator of life. He is God. Uh, so, uh, I don't think we need to act as if our life is just random. Well, why would you believe something? I've heard that. Uh, well, as long as you're sincere about what you believe, uh, everything's okay. Uh, so, we don't ever want to get to the point that nobody follows on the Holy Ghost conviction. Uh, nobody is pressed by the Spirit of God and say, did you recognize God as who He really is? Did you claim Him as creator of the universe? Do you know He spoke uh, this world into existence with a word? Do you understand that life is not random? Uh, they didn't happen some 50 million years ago, some amoeba uh, in a little pool somewhere 
uh, started wiggling around, and eventually, over the millions and millions and millions of years, uh, we wound up uh, with a with a perp. That's how you got here. That's crazy. Uh, but it's an idea uh, the world has today. Uh, that, that's how we got here. Uh, and we, as God's people, don't want to challenge anybody on it because we'll look like we're crazy. No, you won't. Not if you know what you're talking about. Uh, the, 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 the facts are there. Uh, it's a truth. It's a truth that cannot be challenged. God is. Amen. God is. So that can't be challenged. Uh, and if you wish, say, instead of making an excuse why you don't challenge them, you pick up the Word of God and learn how you can challenge them, uh, then there's no problem. God is. And He can be proved. <coughs> uh, that, that, that proof uh, that God created the earth. Uh, that He is the Master Creator. Uh, so, so the first lie uh, is, 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 is that is perpetrated in the world today is that life is just random. It's just something we just kind of happen. Life goes on, you grab what you can of and hold on. You know? Uh, and there's no master design for your life. Uh, there's no perfect will of God. There's no purpose uh, for your creation. Uh, you just get what you can and leave. That's food. But it's a lie that's readily accepted today. Uh, and many of the churches today, uh, or so-called churches today, that's about as deep as they get. It's just random. Just random. Uh, so that's lie number one. Uh, uh, lie number two is this, I believe. And I believe it's very detrimental. And I believe it's very prevalent in the world today. I believe it is the overbearing uh, opinion of the world today. Truth is limited. There is no absolute. Truth. truth is why, however you see it. That's not truth. It's not truth. You're a male or a female. Amen. Amen. Mama said, you're a boy. I said, no, I feel like a girl. Come in here. Put your pants down. No, you're a boy. <laughs> <laughs> absolute. Amen. The lady, come in here. Mm -hmm. You're a girl. The boy, girl. Black, white, up, down, in, out. Doesn't make any difference. There's absolute truth. Amen. And truth is not relative to how you see it. Truth is what thus saith the Lord, God Almighty. Amen. That's what the truth is. You don't have a several different ways you can go to heaven. There's one way to heaven. Amen. Jesus is the way to heaven, and that is the only way to heaven. And you can stand on it. Because life will prove it out. God will not back up or back down. There is one way to heaven. He said, there is one way to heaven through Jesus Christ and Him alone and no other way. No one comes unto the Father but by me. That's what Jesus said. That's who you're depending on for eternal salvation. Uh, and if He don't know, who does? That's an absolute truth. <coughs> Jesus is the only way to heaven. What about people believe the other thing? They're going to die and go to hell. Amen. I'm not happy about that. But I'm honest about that. Yeah, but Brother Jimmy, they believe what they believe real sincerely. Well, they're going to sincerely burn for it. That's the truth. That's the truth. And you can't go to back up from the truth. The truth, the Bible says, will set you free. Amen. Want to be set free? Stand on the truth. There is an absolute truth. So the first lie of the lie is random. Uh, that truth uh, is relative. The truth is relative. Uh, and there's no absolute. The third lie is this, well, man is basically good. That's a lie. Left to ourselves? We'll, no. Uh, that's a lie right out of the pits of hell. Uh, you know better than that. I went out God's grace and mercy and God's delivering power. My Lord, what kind of mess would I be in right now? And it wasn't for God and His grace and mercy. I had His ability to change me. I can't change myself. 
Can't you? The, 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 the lie that man is basically good. Man will basically be in a mess if he don't follow God, follow God's Word uh, and stand on it and look to the master of the wind uh, to deliver him uh, from himself. I'm talking about delivering from the world. I'm talking about delivering me from myself. I'm the worst enemy I got. The worst enemy I got right here. Deliver me from me. That man is basically good. That's a lie. And it's really accepted. And it's proof in the churches today. Oh, uh, these so-called, I don't call them preachers, call them maybe motivational speakers or, or whatever. They're not preachers of the gospel. Uh, they won't, they're not, they're, they're not gonna, they're not going to stand on anything. They stand around some stuff, but they'll walk off from that if you challenge them very much. Now they won't stand anywhere. My Lord, I have never seen more dancing around the truth in my life than when you interview uh, the major uh, preachers uh, of the mega church today. I've never seen more dancing around in my life than how these guys come across. Well, I mean, I think they're. Probably it's just one way to heaven, but I don't want to say that. I don't want to, I don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. I want to offend someone. Or, no, you don't. That's not nice. That's not being nice. That's a lie. That's, a, that's, a, that's as much love as you can show them. That's as much love as you can show them is to be honest with them and say, look, I, listen, I don't want to hurt your feelings. That's not why I'm here. But the truth is, without Christ, you or I as one are going to die and go to hell. Without Christ, that's the truth. That's the truth. And regardless of what you believe. Why? Because that's what God said. Man is basically good. So life is random. Truth is relative. And man is basically good. Those are all lies. Just kind of like our definition now of Christmas. That's a lie. So, now number four is this. <laughs> the highest virtue in life is tolerance. No, it's not. It's righteousness. Amen. It's holiness. It's separation unto God. Amen. That's the greatest virtue. Uh, but we believe that uh, the greatest virtue is, well, we don't, we don't do that in our church. Call. We want everybody to come and just come who you are and leave what you was and don't want to, you know, you don't want to tell them that, uh, you know, that uh, we don't do that here. Uh, in God's family, we, we, we try to, you know. Uh, listen to me, there's nothing wrong uh, with you as a Christian or us at a church but uh, having standards that we stand on. Uh, that we stand on, listen to me. The world that comes in, the flaw, that don't know Christ, that's not our target. Uh, we're not to jump on them and like, oh, you can't, oh, my, I, that's not, that's not where you start at. That's where you wound up. Uh, eventually, uh, serving God, that's a life of uh, progressive sanctification, uh, uh, consistently and constantly working on yourselves and trying to be more like God wants you to be. You can't expect them to do that and they don't even know God. Uh, first off, you got to get them to know God. Uh, right? And I say put up with anything and everything and all, but I'm saying it is, but there's a way that we take and stand on our standards. There's ain't nothing tickles me to death no more than to see one of the young ladies uh, today, 14, 15, 16 year old girls, come in dressed. Amen. I said dressed. Amen. 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 Dressed means from your neck to your ankle. That's dressed. <laughs> to me. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not talking about with your hind end hanging out. I'm not talking about with uh, not even enough mirror, uh, enough material to clean a, a ten gauge shotgun. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a, a whole dress. And nothing tickles me more. I think it's the, I think it's the, I think it's the, I think it's the sweetest and most precious thing uh, that there is to see our young people, our young lady, dressed for God's house. Amen. Not coming, but not to come to hang out. We, 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 we don't go to God's house to hang out. I mean, we're going to hamburger stand. We're going to God's house. We're not going to the beach. We're going to God's house. We're not going to hang out. Right? Those are the standards. Do the best you can. 
Listen to me. I don't care. Make no difference to me. Just wear the best you got. My brother Jimmy said, looks good. Praise the Lord. That's good enough. That's good enough. And I'll do the best I can. I'll wear the best I got. That's what I expect of myself. That's what I expect of God's people. I don't think we should ever get so relaxed at God's house that we think we left home to come hang out. <laughs> we did not come to hang out. We came to God's house to honor, bring glory to His name, Amen. and worship Him. Amen. That's what we came for. You don't go naked to do that. <laughs> Just say it. Just throw that out. You don't go worship God naked with no clothes on. Right? Okay. Amen. 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 Come on. It ain't nobody gonna jump on you and go outside. Come on. Have a backbone instead of spaghetti. Come on. What's wrong with your name? Scared you. Why? Um, the next one is this. The biggest truth or the biggest lie that I think or one of them that's going around today is so, so let's look at it. Life is random, truth is relative, man is basically good, the highest virtue is tolerance, and life consists of what you have. Life consists of what you have, what you can accure to yourself, what you can pile up, what you can stack up, what you, and that's not necessarily good boats and cars and houses and stuff. Sometimes it's higher education or, or, or a fancy this or uh, almighty that or, or whatever, whatever you think uh, that makes you who you are other than being in well with God Almighty, uh, that's the wrong direction. That's a lie. Life does not consist. Uh, and life's greatest aim is not what you can have. You know what? You're going to leave it here. Uh, he's the judge said, I can't be in the world. I came uh, naked. I'm, I'm going to leave that way. I came with nothing. I'm leaving with nothing. Uh, so what I accumulate here, and hey, listen, all that I do here has to do with eternity. Where are going to spend eternity at? How eternity is going to go? They're not going to say, well, how big was your house on earth when you get to heaven? They didn't care if you had a house. They didn't make any difference. Where was your heart? How, how, what did you do for God? Uh, how did you serve Him? Uh, how was He honored in your life? Oh, that's much bigger than a house. That's much bigger than a car. That's much bigger than a motorcycle. What did you do for God? That's what life consists of. Not the things that you have. That's a life concentrated by the world. Amen. You rise above everybody else by the things that you have. Crazy. Listen, I've seen people that poor as a church man live in basically a cardboard box with, with, with roof and tower on it. And that's the happiest, most fulfilled, blessed person. Yet they think they are the richest person around. They don't think they're doing without anything. You pull up in the yard and you depress. They walk out in the yard and say, Glory to God, I got a yard. Yeah, man! I got, I got air to breathe. I got a God that loves me. Amen? Yeah, it ain't all things and stuff, y'all. It ain't all things and stuff. You know? You can be happy. Uh, and what God blesses you with. And then I think everything you have is a blessing from God. I think everything you've got is because of the goodness of God. Well, God wants to give me a bigger house. Why? Why? I'll make you no bigger, taller, better than you was before you was living in a cardboard box and dime tower on it. Same thing. It's who you are. To God, that's a lie perpetrated by the, by, by, by the ones that set in big houses. <laughs> Right? Now they love that life. <laughs> Try to get a house you can't afford. That's what we want you to do. That's put you in prison for the rest of your life. Send you to 30 years ago. You can't pay. Right? And then that's the God you serve rather than the God of heaven. Why? Because you ain't got nothing to give God of heaven once you uh, pay for the, the big house you can't afford. Right? Am I right? Amen. Amen. I'm getting to the end of this. Life's random, truth's relative, man's basically good. The highest virtue is tolerant. Life consists of what you have. Line number six. The goal of life 
is personal satisfaction. That's your goal. Yeah, I just want to be happy. Yeah. That's, what about God's idea? Well, that'll make me happy. Mm, not a point. Not a point. Sometimes every God won't make you happy. But it'll make you feel with joy. Unspeakable and full of glory. But you might not be happy at that time. Sometimes serving God is just tough. Sometimes serving God is just grip your teeth, bearing and going ahead and going ahead. Right? Sometimes you just got to do it because right. But we have, we have just basically got away from that. Doing it because it's right. I don't make no sense. It ain't no fun. It ain't got to be fun. It's got to be right. It's got to be what you promised to God. It's got, it's got to be what you said. It's got to be your word. And you follow it through with it. That's what's right. And personal satisfaction is not the goal of life. A couple more and I'll close. You can become anything you want. It's not true. I'd love to say that that's true. No, everybody has limitations. Everybody does. We need to uh, embrace that. I'm saying it's nobody that can't be. Uh, I'm saying it's well, that's not good. It can't be nothing. That's not true. Everybody, but everybody's got limitations, right? Uh, that's what that's what separates us. That's what puts this and this one and that in that category. This and that and that. That's what makes the world go around. Thank God, everybody can't be a truck driver. Everybody can't be a crane operator. Everybody can't be this. Can't be. Everybody can't be a secretary or a lawyer or. Doctor, if everybody could be a doctor, what else could everybody else do? But well, we just all doctors. Uh, well, uh, we're gonna need somebody to turn the lights off and on. Oh, we don't do that. Uh oh, we can't be a doctor in the dark. You gotta have a light turner on. I'm good at that. I can do that. That's your job. And man, so I'm saying, man, I'm saying, we can be anything you wanna be. No, you need to find out what you want to be and work on that. And let God show you what His purpose for your life is. You could be that. I guarantee you be that. Let God give you a purpose in life. And go for it. Go for it. <laughs> Last one. <coughs> Last line will go. Here's one of the great slides. Death is just a pleasant transition. Because if nobody's in charge and everything's just relative and everybody's basically good and the greatest virtue is tolerance and if life just consists of those things you have and all you need to look for is personal satisfaction and you can become anything you want then death is just a transition into a greater place. That's a lie. <clears throat> Except for a very few. <laughs> now for the Christian, for the born again believer, life is a better transition from this world to the next. But that's not the majority. That's a very small, minute number compared to the population of the world that's actually saved Born again, blood bought people that believed in God to the saving of their soul, repented of their sins, turned their life over to God, and followed Him. That number is very minute. The life, I mean, death is really not just a transition. It's hell. It's a horrible story. It's terribly bad. It can't even be explained. It certainly can't be comprehended. Death is a terrible thing uh, for those that don't know God. Uh, it's the beginning of terror throughout all eternity. World without end. Heat without end. Hell without end. Torment without end. No water there. No water there. No pleasure there. No relief. No rest. That's what death really is to most people, to the majority 
of the population of the world, do you understand they're going to hell? And the best they'll ever get is simply what they get here. All the heaven they'll ever see. And then hell waits. Down all eternity. That's a lie straight out of hell. That death is just a transition. That's simply for that. That's for those that minute number. That narrow. I heard another one of the biggest churches in America said, well, see, we see it like it's a brawl. God's a big God. There's a wrong way to heaven. The lie. The Bible says there's a narrow. Well, he said the broad way leads to destruction. And many there have been to go in there at. But he said straight is the gate, narrow is the way that leads to life everlasting. And few there be that find it. One of the largest churches, mega churches in America, the, the, the spiritual leader of that church said, it's a wrong way. Totally contradictory to the scripture. Amen. Totally contradictory to the scripture. Not a broad way to heaven. Only a narrow way. So I'm closing. So I'm closing. Life is not just random. There is a creator. Truth is not relative. There is one absolute truth. The Word of God. Absolute truth. Man is not basically good. Man is basically bad. He can't change himself. Left to himself, he'll eat you alive. Highest virtue is tolerance. No, it's righteousness. Life consists of what you have. No, life consists of what you believe. Gold of life is not personal satisfaction. It's finding out the will of God and carrying out the will of God for your life. That's the gold of life. You can be any, become anything you want to. No, you can't. Find out what your limitations are. Thank God for creating you a special being. And go for it. Put everything you got into it. And trust God. Death is a pleasant transition. No, it's not. Not for those that don't know Christ. It's hell. Waiting. It's the jaws of Satan himself to be gnashed to pieces without any relief, without any pleasure, without any deliverance. The worst of the worst. The worst of the worst. Don't try to water down the gospel too much and make God too mushy and squishy. God is real and right and absolute. But He is just. And He will forgive sin. And He did come to die for all mankind. Black, white, red, yellow, doesn't make any difference. He come to die for all men. And He paid the price for your sin and my sin. He gave Himself so you could be saved. That's the absolute truth. And if you believe that, then death is a transition into a greater place. But that's what we're faced with today. We're going out to have Christmas. Let's watch these lies that have been perpetrated in the world today. And let's don't be scared to stand up. I'm not talking about be rude. I'm not talking about uh, be grass or, uh, or smart acky or, or whatever you want. That's not what I'm talking about. But I'm talking about be sure and right and righteous and stand on what you believe and stand up for God during this time to stand in it. Because listen, if you're here today and have an issue uh, that you need to deal with God on, uh, first, those of you that are lost, uh, there is an altar of repentance. Uh, there is an altar of salvation offered uh, to you today. Come and be saved. Uh, for you of God's people that are here uh, that need a touch from heaven, uh, that need to leave this place delivered, uh, set back on high again, uh, right and, uh, get your boat right in, in the right direction. Whatever it is, you come and you share that with the Lord today. Uh, but God needs to speak to you before you go. And if He's not spoken to you yet, I'm very worried and concerned about your soul today. 
very concerned that you have uh, an opportunity to do business with God. We'd ask you to do that at this time. Father, uh, as we close, God, thank you uh, for being so good to us. Thank you, God, for Christmas and Jesus uh, and what it means to us as your people. Uh, God, let us not get too bogged down uh, into the world system uh, that we lose our, our focus on uh, the King of Kings, Emmanuel, God with us. Uh, Lord, let us not lose focus on that. Uh, Lord, but let us be filled with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Greatest time of the year uh, for Christian God till we celebrate the coming of our King. Uh, Lord, and we uh, sit in expectation of your soon return. So God, you have your way this morning in the lives of these people in this room. And God, we'll have uh, God, all, all the honor, the praise, and glory goes to you for all that you used to do today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. That is good, please.